The Border Fox, The Life and Crimes of Desi O'Hare, A Notorious Beginning. During the mid-1950s, in the rugged border area between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, a young man named Desi O'Hare was born into a world rife with tension and violence. Raised in the 1950s and 60s, Desi grew up amid the Troubles, a period of intense conflict between Irish Republicans seeking independence from British rule and Unionists advocating for continued ties to the United Kingdom. The turbulent environment in which he was brought up would significantly shape his destiny. Desi O'Hare was born in Keaty County, Armagh, Northern Ireland on the 26th of October, 1956. He came from a working class family and his early life was marked by a troubled childhood and exposure to criminal elements. Growing up in the inner city, he faced numerous challenges, including poverty and limited access to educational opportunities. From a young age, Desi became entangled in a life of crime, engaging in petty theft and street brawls. As the troubles escalated throughout the 1970s, Desi O'Hare saw an opportunity to exploit the chaotic situation along the border region. He was drawn to the Republican cause and paramilitary organizations. He had a strong connection to the cause due to his family's strong Republican background. Desi's grandmother had been in prison for six months on charges of keeping Republicans, while his father and six of his uncles had been interned between 1940 and 1944. It is safe to say that anti-British, pro-Republican feelings stirred deep within O'Hare, and at 16 years old, he joined the Provisional Irish Republican Army, better known as the IRA. During the early days of his time in the IRA, Desi was involved in a number of shootouts with the police and different branches of the army. He seemed to live a charmed life and always made an escape. Desi was known for his ruthless tactics and cunning, quickly earning the nickname, The Border Fox. In 1975, O'Hare received his first conviction. He was caught in possession of explosives, but managed to get off lightly and only receive a suspended sentence. This initial brush with the law didn't deter Desi. If anything, it was the catalyst that saw him ramp up his involvement in far more violent and despicable crimes. On October 8, 1977, Desi and members of his IRA crew shot and killed Margaret Ann Hurst in front of her three-year-old daughter. This horrific crime was justified in Desi's mind due to Hurst being a volunteer member of the Ulster Defense Regiment, which was part of the British Army. During this time, authorities linked the Border Fox to a number of violent crimes, killings, and acts of terrorism, including the attempted assassination of a politician. It was around this time, due to a series of disagreements with the senior members of the IRA, that Desi aligned himself with the Irish National Liberation Army, known simply as the INLA. In 1980, O'Hare was finally imprisoned. Desi had been involved in the attempted killing of a British Army officer at his wedding reception. He was finally arrested after a dramatic car chase that ended in a crash. O'Hare broke both ankles in the crash and his associate died as a result of his injuries. O'Hare received a sentence of nine years and was released in 1986. Upon his release, O'Hare found that the INLA was in turmoil and had split into a number of warring factions. During this time, Desi was implicated in a number of high-profile abductions and killings of people associated with the INLA. The power struggle within these groups was ultra-violent and threatened to append the entire Republican movement. One of the most infamous incidents involving Desi O'Hare occurred in 1987, when O'Hare and his gang targeted a well-known dentist, Dr. John O'Grady, kidnapping him and leading to a tense hostage situation. The gang moved their hostage to a number of different houses. The authorities were always just behind, and at one point, the gang managed to escape by opening fire on the police and hijacking a car. O'Hare's ransom demands were not met, so he displayed his merciless nature, brutally assaulting Dr. O'Grady and severing two of his fingers with a hammer and chisel and sending them to Carlo Cathedral as a message to the family and authorities. During one of the ransom phone calls, he also threatened to chop off the dentist and send pieces every day unless his demands were met. 
Authorities trace the gang to where they were holed up and finally rescue the hostage, but O'Hare managed to escape. He became the most wanted man in Ireland after his escape, with £100,000 being offered for information about his whereabouts. This act of kidnapping and violence shocked the nation and further fueled the public's fear of the border fox and his gang. While O'Hare seemed invincible for a time, his reign of terror came to an end in 1987 when he was arrested by the Gerda, the Republic of Ireland's police force. The authorities had been tirelessly pursuing him and his capture marked a significant victory in the fight against organized crime in the region. In typical border fox fashion, his capture was a bloody affair with multiple arrests, the death of a member of O'Hare's gang and Desi himself being shot eight times. In 1988, Desi O'Hare was brought to trial for his involvement in the kidnapping of Dr. O'Grady and other criminal activities. The evidence presented against him was overwhelming and he was convicted on multiple accounts, including kidnapping, assault and firearms offenses. O'Hare was sentenced to 40 years in prison, sending a clear message that even the most feared criminals could be held accountable for their actions. Imprisonment did little to quell Desi O'Hare's violent tendencies. During his time in prison, he remained connected to his criminal network and was involved in several violent incidents behind bars. Despite efforts to keep him isolated, O'Hare managed to maintain some control over his gang activities from his prison cell. As the years passed, the troubles began to fade and a new era of peace and reconciliation emerged in Northern Ireland and the Republic. During this time, there were efforts to reform and rehabilitate former paramilitary members, including Desi O'Hare. He expressed remorse for his past actions and claimed to have renounced violence. Some prison staff and activists believed in O'Hare's potential for rehabilitation and he was offered opportunities to engage in educational programs and counseling. However, skeptics remained unconvinced, pointing to his history of deception and brutality. In 2006, after serving 19 years of his 40-year sentence, Desi O'Hare was released on parole. His release stirred controversy and public debate. Some saw it as a sign of progress in the peace process, emphasizing the importance of rehabilitation and second chances. Others, however, felt that justice had not been fully served and feared that he might resume his criminal activities. In the years following his release, Desi O'Hare largely kept a low profile. He maintained a distance from the public eye and the media, likely aware of the animosity many still felt toward him. However, whispers persisted of his involvement in criminal activities and predictably, he was sentenced to seven years in prison in 2019 for assault and false imprisonment. Those crimes sound familiar. He is currently incarcerated in Port Leia's prison, where he is regularly visited by his wife and is described as being a model prisoner. Desi O'Hare's life is a dark tale of a man born into a tumultuous time who chose the path of violence and crime, leaving a trail of fear and misery in his wake. His rise as the infamous Border Fox was characterized by audacious crimes, kidnappings, and a ruthless disregard for human life. Despite his eventual capture and imprisonment, the legacy of fear and violence he left behind continued to haunt the collective memory of Ireland. In the end, the story of Desi O'Hare serves as a reminder of the lasting impact of violence and crime on individuals and communities. It is also a testament to the complexities of human nature as his life intertwined themes of terror, remorse, and the elusive hope for redemption.